75 HJ Premier with a standard six cylinder that I've restored. I also um, have been nominated to be filming in Wolf Creek number no. three and John Jarrett has actually driven and loves the car. But actually just talking on this particular car, it originally started out as being remote controlled because the concept in the opening chase was he barrels straight into the um, semi-trailer wreck. Yeah, and they actually set it up that they were going to remote control the car because it would be too dangerous to put someone in it. Well, they didn't have a lot of money for the remote control and they put it in and it wasn't super accurate. So, down on the southeastern freeway down near at East Q where they took it out for the test run, they had a driver in it, but of course he couldn't actually override the rams. So it bounced off the Arncola railing uh, down the southeastern freeway when they decided, no, no, perhaps we'd better try another method which of course, as we all know, was a steel cable, which um, eventually put the car in the back of the semi-trailer. Uh, yeah, these guys were, one of these was, was an ex-police car, and of course, it was, one of them was actually repainted white and sold at the end of the, end of the movie. Uh, and it actually came back because the white paint was peeling off, and they had to repaint it again, if only you could have that car now. Oh, yeah, I play the Rambler, I'm Darcy Wells. Um, got to say it was a lot of fun because the whole thing was just fun everyone was understanding um, yeah it was just just like a nice Sunday picnic <laughs> it's in. It's in. we had a great time doing the uh, the short video for the Mad Max Clunes 40th anniversary uh, uh, get together up at Clunes. Fantastic short video. We uh, we had this car involved in it, which is my um, black Mad Max coupe. Um, it was it was so much fun. We had the coupe chasing the Quacker 1000s down the road with the yellow interceptor, Pete Robinson's interceptor, which was fantastic. And um, we had an absolute ball on the day. The guys were brilliant. Um, this car is a 460 big block. It's not an exact replica, but it is. It's you know, it's close, there's lots of points. Um, and yeah, we do lots of Mad Max events with the car, we love it. Well, what can you say about this beautiful 34? I mean, it's a remarkable looking car, a lot of hours have gone into this. Who likes this? <laughs> the Chevelle, who likes the Chevelle? Alright, so far the black is 100% in. Who likes the EH? Oh, G'day, my name's Peter. Um, I played the dark one in the, the Search for Max. Uh, I got a phone call from uh, Mark Burke in regards to putting a little promo clip together. And we sort of just ran with it and uh, the product that you see on the screen now is uh, what we came up with and uh, the end result was uh, pretty fantastic I think. So uh, it's a credit to the guys. Uh, it was a really good day shooting and um, we all had fun and the end result was brilliant. So awesome, awesome job. Well done. Thanks very much. So once again we have to pick it out. This one, the left, the Tirana. Yeah. Somebody count quickly. It's got two hands up. Well, uh, one hand at a time, mate, not two. <laughs> Well, I guess the last go is up to you. Is it an original Australian classic or is it the Muscle American? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're the judges. Who would like to see this one? <laughs> Hey, I'm Berkey. Um, uh, today, I believe, was uh, successful. Uh, we were at 371 uh, Hot, uh, Settlement Road, Thomastown. Today, we had the preview for the search for Max. Uh, it's a short promo that a, a group of 25 people from surrounding areas, from such as uh, Inglewood, come together to put together a uh, small, small uh, promo movie. It's going to Clunes with the rest of the 
Mad Max guys. Um, big collection of cars going up there. And um, it'll be a huge event. Lots of actors going. Uh, big event. Lots of you know, the Dark Clouds, amongst other bands, are coming. The Dark Clouds did a, a great video uh, clip, which was used in this short video, promotion video. Really good. So, um, yeah, hope you all come along and enjoy, because you, if you're not there, it's not worth, not worth being alive, I say. <laughs> Just to give everyone a bit of an idea on the storyline, um, we sort of uh, got the dark one that was written out of the original Mad Max script and we've sort of incorporated it into the promo, the search for Max. Um, basically, how it works was uh, Main Force Patrol was sort of losing, losing area and um, Max had been gone for over a decade because he had lost his best mate, lost his, his wife, his kid, and um, he left and took his one possession, which was his um, black coupe. The Rambler um, is a psychotic criminal known to Main Force Patrol officers. They intercepted him and they arrested him. He was a bit of a pain in the butt, um, but after an interrogation, uh, command had actually come to the assumption that he possibly knew something, and. They suspected Max may be alive, so they looked for volunteers within Main Force Patrol. After a couple of weeks, uh, the Dark One come out of retirement along with um, Larry, and they actually uh, volunteered for a suicide mission to go into um, the sector which was run by the Alkalites motorcycle gang and to go find if Max was really alive. And that's what the movie was sort of um, the short promo movie was sort of based around. Um, anyway, um, we now, after completing today, we now move to a new part of it. Where today we will be announcing um, a tour where we'll be, it'll really be around about November. Uh, more information will come where we'll actually revisit um, back to Max. We'll go back in to uh, locations around Melbourne and hopefully people that are coming from around the world for the Mad Max 40th anniversary can participate in this tour which once again, Mad Max Garage and motorcycle enthusiasts are coming together to bring this one um, for, the, for the fans. And I'd like to say thanks to Yuri Tucker for um, being here today. Max is a main force officer trying to protect his family and stay alive.